There are various ways kids are attending school this fall, whether it's fully virtual, partially in person, or at school with social distancing and masks. We're all trying to do what's best to keep our families safe. And although we're barely into the new school year, we do know this year's looking a lot different. Teenagers in particular might have a difficult time expressing how these adjustments are affecting them. So before they begin to struggle with schoolwork or any issues with their friends arise, Carrie Kampakis, she's a parenting blogger, mother to four teenagers, and author of the new book, Love Her Well. She's here to share how we can best connect with our teenagers now. Hey, Carrie, it sounds like you have plenty of firsthand insight over there. Uh, four kids, a preteen and three teenagers. Wow. Yes, all girls. Too. All girls, my goodness. So you wrote a book about your experiences, about the parent-teenager relationships, and it really applies to what we're dealing with right now. It does. I, I spent several years writing books for teenage girls and then just wrote this book for moms of teenage girls just to really share some of my own experiences and also some of the experiences of other moms and daughters I've met over the years. But um, I didn't know how applicable it would be in 2020 when relationships have become so important because we can't control so much that's happening outside in the world, but we can control those relationships inside our homes. Okay, so this latest book's more for the moms, but you've written stuff for the teenagers in the past. When we talk about teenagers, um, what are some of the ways they're expressing frustrations when they're faced with new challenges like distance learning? That's a great question. You know, a lot of times it'll come out as moodiness or they'll be snappy. And as a parent, sometimes our instinct is just to react to that, to get angry and frustrated. And really that just, you know, builds a bigger, it just creates a bigger gap between the parent and the child. So what I've learned in my own home is just trying to be positive and not take things personally and know that they're struggling with things inside. And it's our job to just to be that source of strength and wisdom and just to keep loving them through this. And I think especially in this year, it's important to really protect their mental health, to make sure that they're not isolating themselves from their family or from their friends to make sure that, you know, those things are intact. Yeah, that is a big concern. Do you have any tips to help teenagers adjust and and how we can stay vigilant with things like using social distancing and masks? Yes, I think that just making sure that they have those social interactions that they can do, even if it's a small group of friends, that they can do it safely. Um, I know one mom who her daughter was really struggling. She didn't have any good friends in town and was really lonely. So she surprised her with a, a friend from camp, had her come in to visit and surprise her daughter. So I think just thinking creatively like that. Um, you know, another big motto in our home is, I try to tell my children, don't struggle alone, especially in a year like this, that none of us are meant to carry those burdens by ourselves, to let your family and your friends help you through it and talk those things out. Well, when you talk about you know, moms and daughters, obviously I was a teenage daughter at one point. I think I wasn't that tough, but I, looking back, yeah, that, that relationship can be tough, especially with a mom who's trying to connect. What is the key to connecting? Right, I think, like I said earlier, just um, not taking things personally and just to keep showing love to them, even if they're not showing love back to us, and to be to really parent from that place of strength and not defeat. And that's something I've really had to remind myself of this year because I think we feel like failures in so many ways or we're losing our temper or getting short, short um, impatient and um, just really knowing that that's okay. It's okay for them to know that we're not perfect parents, but we're going to love them through it and we're going to you know, try again tomorrow. Yeah, and some of those words that my mom said to me, they really uh, still stick in my head. There's so much power in those words. How do you suggest moms choose their words wisely when talking to their teenage daughters in particular? Right, you know, I think the biggest thing is just to, to speak life and to frame things positively whenever possible, and also to help our daughters and our sons have that positive self-talk. And even if we're correcting them, we can tell them, you know, this was a terrible choice that you made, this is not like you, this is not who you are. Let's you know, see what we can learn from this and improve it going forward. Um, and also just telling our teenagers that this is a challenging year, but you are strong and you are smart and you are a problem solver. You know, you can get through this and I will be here to help you. Yeah, those words of encouragement. And finally, you know, a lot of families are feeling lost because of the teenage milestones. You know, what if you have a graduating senior? How can you get creative and still celebrate that they're gonna be part of the class of 2021? That is a great question too. I actually have a senior this year and we've gone through that. I think the benefit for us versus last year is that we had a little bit of um, forewarning. We knew what we were getting into. And I think again, for parents just to frame it as positively as possible, it's going to look different, but we have tried to do some small get togethers, just some more intimate gatherings. 
um, that we can do safely. And just look at, you know, focus on what we can do, focus on the benefits, and just be really grateful for things that do happen. Those are all great points. Carrie Compactus, thanks for joining us. And you can find her book, check out her blog, and you can even tune into her podcast by visiting carriecompactus.com.